That's a, actually a very good question because it applies to everything in life. But you know, once you know, particularly like rainy days, so the incidence of depression is much higher in areas where there's more rainfall. We know that. <clears throat> the incidence of alcoholism is extremely high in places like Alaska, northern places, where they go through months of darkness. I mean, it just says to us how important and meaningful light is. And we could think of that just as this external source of light that we need, or we could use it as an opportunity to continuously tune in to that inner light that shines constantly within each of us, but we're turned away from it. We're not looking into the light. And whatever situation, if there's a situation that develops, well, every situation that's difficult, every single one, our practice is that constant practice to look towards that light. It's there. We are light. It's not anything that we need to become. You know, we are it, but we're busy trying to look outside for it. What was the, the uh, oh, master said one time, let me just see if I can remember. He said, it's like trying to use a candle to guide you on a bright, sunny day. You have all the light you need. But that, that was, is what he said, not me. Um, and we're looking for those sources. So that how do we do that? First of all, is that we, as much as often, we practice it mindfully that we say to ourselves, What's, where's the light here? Where's the light here? Where's the light here? As soon as we find ourselves struggling, and we, because we all know, so we tune in, we find that inner light, we keep remembering it, because of course we forget, of course we do. But the more we practice, the less we forget. And there is, there's really no other way. Whatever we need to do, we can keep images of the masters in front of us in as many ways as we can, in every room of our house, on our computers, on our cell phones. I mean it, you know, just because we won't remember them. We will find ourselves behaving in ways that we do not want to behave. And a big one is forgetting that we don't really need that outer source of light. Right now, I probably say, there are people who say, oh, I love the rain, and I'm sure they do. But 90 days in a row of it, or, you know, I heard how many people last year certainly, but even this year, people would say to me, oh, I'm praying for the drought again, you know, when it was raining so much. And I would say, don't put that thought out. You can pray for the rain to stop now, but please don't pray for the drought to come back. But we get tired of those things. But I have found, and I see it in my own home, that those things, I, didn't, I don't love months in a row of rain. It's not my favorite. I also really love the sunshine outdoors. But I could see the difference in how the rain was affecting me and how it was affecting Barry. It was absolutely obvious because he doesn't have the same practice of finding that light, lightness of being within. And of course, I forget way more often. 
I'm shocked at how often I forget, if the truth be told. I keep saying, you know better than this. How are you here again? But I keep coming back. And then we find that the times that we're just living from it, the times where whatever it is, we don't snap at someone, we don't carry negative thoughts of anybody ever. Now, not, probably none of us can say that right now. I mean, maybe some of you can. I don't want to say it for sure. But most of us, most human beings in the world, have a negative thought about somebody. Even, not even what we would consider negative. Why are they wearing those clothes today? Why did they marry? What did they see in that person? What, what, what? But the more that we practice, the less that happens. And the problem with all of that is that as that happens, it affects us, not them. When we get angry at somebody, snap at somebody, it's terrible for us. So I think the spiritual practice path is just, that's what it is. It's constantly bringing ourselves back. So, yeah. Not anything you didn't know, but even the question, we need to keep repeating those answers. Just repetition makes a, a vibration in the air, uh, and that holds us there. Yeah. But at the time of meditation, that rub happens, that, well, this has happened, that has happened, this calculation, that cooking, all that, and the meditation is happening. Pranayam is happening in the face of that. So just practice is the way. Yeah. And you know, japa, I think you just said that, right? You said japa meditation, didn't you? No, I said pranayam, but japa is... Uh, but, okay, I thought yeah. you said japa, but yeah. I heard it. Yeah. So japa is an interesting thing that I don't do often enough. You know, I think now when I used to be a big runner or even when I used to hike the dish, walk the dish most days. If I was alone, I would be listening. Music was so uplifting. And many times I wasn't listening to our music when sometimes I would listen to something like the oratorio, which really gets me up. But not always. I would listen to some of the music from my past. The, and then the run would be over before I knew it, or the dish, I'd be coming to the end, and I'd be surprised. And then some years ago, I started saying to myself, why aren't you doing japa? Why aren't you just repeating God, Christ, Guru, God, Christ, as you walk, just constantly? Because as you say, the vibration we, it's in such an uplifted vibration. And remembering that Master told us to do that changes everything. You know, so it's Master's job that we're doing. And it, it changes our energy. 